organizations, local government leaders at all levels, esteemed dignitaries from overseas, the congregation present. Good afternoon. Was it still morning? Good morning. It is a great honor and pleasure to stand before you today as we celebrate this momentous occasion, the consecration of the new All Saints Cathedral for the Diocese of Kampala. A vision now realized through dedication, faith, and unity. This consecration is a testament to our collective spirit and unwavering commitment to a shared goal. Allow me, on my own behalf, I'm sorry I didn't recognize Mrs. Jacqueline Mbabas. behalf of the organizing committee and all the diocesans of the Diocese of Kampala, allow me to convey our grateful thanks to all our distinguished guests present here today. We have come to share our joy and happiness. The consecration of this newly built cathedral does not only mark a significant milestone in our community's spiritual journey, which of course it does, but a deep and sustained change in our society. From starting in 1912 as a chapel for the chaplaincy of the British Colonial Hospital that accommodated the small number of worshippers as they were, to today, when it has grown into the cathedral for hundreds of thousands of Christians in the Diocese of Kampala. This growth mirrors the change Uganda as a nation has undergone. This grand edifice, this grand structure we have here, stands as a testament to our collective faith, resilience, and commitment to creating a space that accommodates our growing congregation. The journey, which began, as Mrs. Igondura said a moment ago, in the late 1990s, due to the need for more space, has culminated in a magnificent structure that can seat more people, featuring modern technological designs, while echoing historical essence of its predecessor. The new cathedral features several unique architectural elements. It is designed as a postmodern six-sided building, which includes a 45-meter bell, bell tower that echoes architectural features of the old church. And the structure now the new one that is open today is 10 times bigger than the cathedral that has converted into a normal church today. The old cathedral could only seat 400 people, but as you heard, this one can seat up to 5,000. I am informed, a fact I am yet to confirm, that it is the largest auditorium in East Africa. Applause 
I believe it is the right thing to do to recognize and appreciate the leadership of the church in this transformation of our society. And indeed, I like to think that there is joy in heaven today. And that the spirit of our departed leaders, Archbishops Eric Kasabiti from 1972-74, Jenan Ruum, 74-77, Sivana Swani, 77-84, Yona Okoth, 84-95, and Livingston Paranyakoro Nkoyoyo, 95-2004, and the other pioneers share at this moment our happiness. I would like to recognize Mr. President and welcome in our midst in today's celebration the two retired, although I haven't seen the other one, retired leaders of our analysis, Archbishop Henry Rook Orombi, 2004-2012, and Archbishop Stanley Tagari, 2012-2020. The seed our past leaders planted and lovingly cultivated by their successors for the last 50 years have grown into a gigantic tree, which is this edifice. The completion of All Saints Cathedral is not just an architectural achievement, but also a reflection of the unwavering support and dedication from our community. Despite challenges such as funding and the global COVID-19 pandemic, we have persevered. We extend our heartfelt gratitude to the leadership of All Saints Cathedral, past and present, and especially to the Archbishop, His Grace, the Most Reverend Dr. Samuel Stephen Kazimba Mgaru, and his team for their unwavering commitment, for their unwavering commitment and dedication in spearheading this monumental project. Their vision and tireless efforts have brought us to this momentous occasion and we are deeply thankful to all the thousands of believers and well-wishers who have generously contributed billions of shillings, as you had up to 25 billion shillings, making this dream a reality. I am informed that uh, I missed out. Surprise, surprise, because uh, I don't know where he's seated, our former Chief Justice, Honorable Justice Benjamin Hodoki. The Chief Justice sat with the clergy. That's why I didn't see him. And uh, we have Justice of the Supreme Court, Justices of the Supreme Court, and other judges of the High Court and the Court of Appeal. We have, together, we celebrate this achievement as testimony to our collective faith and commitment to our community. As you heard, the cathedral now stands completed in its third phase, ready to serve as a beacon of hope and spiritual guidance for, gener for generations to come. We pray that this commitment endures as we go to the next and final phase of the construction of our beloved cathedral. Today, in addition to consecrating the cathedral, we celebrate the elevation and consecration of Venerable Canon Frederick Jackson Barney as the new Assistant Bishop of the Diocese of Kampala. This occasion also marks the ordination of new priests and deacons, along with the installation of both clergy canons and lay canons. 
I extend my heartfelt congratulations to all those receiving these sacred responsibilities. May you embrace your new assignments with dedication and grace, serving our community with love and commitment as you guide us in our journey of faith and find out who we are and how to come to peace. I am fully confident that in the fulfillment of his new responsibilities, Bishop Barry and his staff will enjoy the loving, enthusiastic support of all the priests and lay people to the greater glory of God. To the construction committee led ably by Canon Designate Vivian Igundura, I offer my sincere thanks for the dedication and diligence put into bringing this cathedral to life. The quality of craftsmanship and attention to detail speak volumes of your commitment. I would also like to take this opportunity to thank each member of the organizing committee, the tireless hours, meticulous planning, and unwavering dedication you have put in to ensure the success of this day have not gone unnoticed. Your contributions have been invaluable, and I am truly grateful. Finally, to all those who have gathered here today, thank you for your presence. May this cathedral serve as a beacon of hope and faith for generations to come. Thank you, and may God bless us all. Musengwa Yekaza. Tuenda ino kumutu tuvya Musengwa Yefe, atukolele virunji, chiododo. All government leaders here present, church leaders, invited guests, I want to respect the protocol as it was mentioned. Welcome to this eventful day in the life of All Saints Cathedral Kampala, the Diocese of Kampala, and the Church of Uganda in Geno. Ebenezer, thus far the Lord has brought us. Today is All Saints Day, celebrated all over the world in the church calendar. And as the diocese, we decided to celebrate it uniquely as you have seen. Thank you for sacrificing your time to be with us, especially the guest of honor. Thank you very, very much. <laughs> our chief guest, we extend our sincere appreciation to you for having spared time to pray and share this wonderful moment with us. Thank you for coming with Imama. We are so grateful. <laughs> you have given the All Saints Cathedral Congregation, great motivation and joy. Thank you very much for your moral and financial support. And I would like to welcome all our guests from far and near. We appreciate your presence. We have even others from UK, Great Truth, Brother Ben and Brother Mark. Would you stand up? so that the President can see. Please appreciate with me our retreat leader and a preacher, the Right Reverend Professor Alfred Orwa, for leading this retreat well, and for God's word he has preached. Thank you very, very much. Apoyo. I want to recognize the leadership of former Prime Minister, Dwight Honorable Amama Mbabazi, for the great work you have done with the support of Karuni Jackie. Let us appreciate them. Thank you very, very much. 
And also your co-chair, Mr. Edison Vesikomwe, your co-chair. Thank you very, very much. Reverend Jasper Tumimisiwe, and all of you who have led the organizing committee very well. We have among the provost, uh, Reverend Canon Stephen Tromwe. One of those who did great work. And allow me to appreciate again my predecessors. Archbishop Livingstone in Palanyinkoyo. Mama is here. Mama, stand up for recognition. Archbishop Henry Rukolombi. Archbishop Stanley Tagali, who is here with us. And Mama Beatrice, Mama Beatrice is also here. And we uh, want to appreciate even the Assistant Bishop, Bishop Lucas Gonasa, Bishop Elifaz Mali, Bishop Lilinjie, Bishop Anington Mutevi, Nagurumbia, and also the Building Committee for the Good Work. You know we are building on, on their foundation. For us, we, just, we are just continuing with what they started. And for that, I want to acknowledge each and every person for what you have done, your contribution. <laughs> and all those who have been appreciated to our chief guest, we are grateful to you for supporting the church mission of preaching the gospel by providing us with the transportation for all bishops. <laughs> Let us appreciate. But also the conducive environment for reaching out to many. Thank you so much for supporting us to clear the Janani Rumu Church House Debt. Now we are debt free. <laughs> that building on Campbell Road, which is called Janan Room Church House, is ours without any debt. <laughs> and we thank you so much, Your Excellency, even for directing the Minister of Finance to compensate us for our land at Entebbe and at Makere. That one helped us a lot. And I request that the government clears our remaining compensation of 21 billion for Makere Land so that we do our mission. They cleared the other, this financial year, we were not considered. I think I, am, I have been advised that we can see how we can calculate it so that we have our interest calculated. <laughs> Your Excellency, just behind here, just behind the, the, the cathedral, just here, there is a piece of land which, was, which is on sale at 90.3 billion Uganda shares. All of you, I want to request you to pray and support us so that we purchase this land behind us for purposes of operation as the cathedral. Is that a good thing? Yes. If it's a good thing, clap. <laughs> Your Excellency, just on 29th October, we were in Wusoga and celebrated the day of Bishop Huntington, the first bishop of the Church of Uganda, who was killed by uh, Chief Luba because he, he didn't get the understand, the, uh, understand the language well. The King of Uganda said, Mute, and the Musoga saw it, Mute, so he killed uh, Bishop Huntington. And now, Bishop Huntington Day, as a public holiday, is not yet sorted as you had promised to consult Your Excellency. 
Once again, I thank you all for honoring our invitation, for your patience and great support towards God's work, and also the support you have given us. Allow me to appreciate Bishop Hanning Mutebi for the great work he has done. And Mama Mire, Mama Mire of Kenya, Mutebi, thank you very much. Let us appreciate them. And at this note, allow me to thank God for sparing the life of Bishop Mutebi. This is a miracle, Bishop. And Your Excellency, I want to appreciate you for personally contributing towards his health expenses in the UK. And all God's people, thank you so much. We will continue to pray for you, even in retirement. Bishop Eric Barwa, we welcome you, and we pray that God will continue to take care of you. And at this moment, Your Excellency and Mama, please accept the gift your children, your people prepared for you and Mama. This is a gift of well-selected Bibles, from wonderful scriptures for you and Mama. And we know Mama loves scriptures. And you also love scriptures because you were a, a, a scripture union leader in the past. But uh, because of protocol, we gave those Bibles to your team uh, for security to check them thoroughly well. And if they wish, they bring them and bring them to you. Those are your, your gifts. Thanks be to God. We appreciate every part of you. And we appreciate even. Uganda Prison Service, they are the ones who have made all the furniture here was made by them. And, and the Commissioner Yavasaija is the one who bought himself the, the cathedral, my cathedral. It is a gift from him. So thank you so much. May I take this in your honor? to invite Your Excellency. identify and confess. When we came from our fightings, I was surprised to find that the Archbishop of the Church of Uganda, of which I am a member, was not based at Namirembe. Because for me, I knew the headquarters of the Church of Uganda was in Amirembe. Up to now, I have never found out why. <laughs> but I felt the HIV, HIV, HIV is the seal of Okufuka. Okufuka was when you become cold, when you are discouraged. I was discouraged. I thought Namirembe there was our headquarters. Up to now, I have never got a good explanation. What is exactly the problem? But also, in our, when I was still active with the Scripture Union, 
Police or Kremers or Kremers are to challenge fellow Christians about an issue. So I hope at some stage I will be helped to understand why the Archbishop, the ones I found here, those I found here. No, oh, by the time we got rid of Idi Amin, there was one. One was the one in China last time. Then I heard that uh, he was an exile in the Kasumoro church, the one with this whole sense of the Europeans. But it's good. You, the modern church of Uganda people, have given the Archbishop a defeating cathedral. So as I wait for the exp ex uh, explanation, <laughs> I, I congratulate the Christians. <laughs> now, I have to, you could call them spiritual points. One is, one is developmental, the other one is spiritual. The developmental one is to challenge all the Christians about the parable of the talents. You know that those people who are given talents and the one who multiplied, the one who multiplied the talents, and the one who lost the talents, and the one who just sat on the talents. You know, their boss when he came back, he was happy with the other one, and was not happy with the other one. So we as Christians, we must be examples to the Bakafi by using our talents. And in another part of the scriptures, it says, let your light so shine before men that they see your good deeds and praise your Father in heaven. <laughs> Therefore, never impressed by people who say they are Christian, they are Christian, they are this and that. But if you say the way they are living, they are not living a good example, a good life for themselves and a good example to the others. So that is also uh, another challenge. When I come here, you know, the Bible comes back in my head. Because there is another portion which says that our bodies are the temple of the. Unfortunately, I know the way we are in Ankara. So I try to translate in English. In the Yeti Yeka Yarahanga, it says So, if our bodies are the temple of the Lord, we must look after those bodies. No hunger. No alcohol, no umaraya, no is, is, is obesity a sin or so or what? So therefore, these two portions of the Bible, the parable of, of the talents 
and the, the other quotation about being examples, I would really like to commend them to the Christian. The United States of America, which so, so many people talk about, was actually built by Barocoli, by Puritans, who came from Europe. They, they, they had a lot of discipline, a lot of zeal. That's how they built the U.S. Now it has been taken over by other people. The, the people are in charge now are other people now. Homosexual, what have you. <laughs> but the ones who built were the Christians. So you people, the Christians, if you really follow the example of Jesus, you, you, you can do a lot for this country. Now, on the issue of the spiritual side, I normally get problems with the people who say they are religious, but you find that they are also bigots. Bigots. Bigot is a word for being like a narrow minded, a bigot. Because you remember the parable of the Good Samaritan. Jesus, he, Jesus was a, a revolutionary. He really challenged those Jews who, who had uh, turned the religion into something else. But the parable of the Good Samaritan showed that your tribe did not matter, your religion did not matter, what mattered was what you did, your actions. So, when I find people fighting, in, that they are fighting, and this, this was part of the, one of the reasons why in 1965, at Muiri, at the Muiri Conference, Scripture Union, I disagreed with the Scripture Union leaders and uh, with the Drua Beats and did other things. The part of this was bigotry, chauvinism, to behave as if the denominations, the denominations, Catholic, Protestant, Muslim, what? as if they are the most important thing, not the actions. And sometimes I see some of this, even, you know NRM of course fought to this. That's how NRM succeeded. When we started our work, we tested completely sectarianism. That's how we were able to build that, this force, which has been there for some time now. And I'm glad, eventually, when we came into the, into, into the government, I don't know whether the churches copied our example. They started the Interreligious Council. I don't know whether you followed our example, you had done it before, I don't remember. But I congratulate you for having the Interreligious Council. But I would like this to really percolate down to the whole society so that you don't, you don't you, you, you judge people by what they do, not the level of the, the, the denomination where they worship, where they do this. The, the, the. Because then how do you handle the, the parable of the good Samaritan? I hear the Samaritans were not the Jews. They were also not, of, I think they were of another religion, but what he did is what Jesus praised. Finally, I discussed with Mama when we saw the good thing here. I said, I take it because they did.
And then uh, we agreed that uh, from our, our cows, not from the government budget, but from our cows, we contribute 100 million shillings. But since you also elected me as president, you remember that, that issue? <laughs> Some three years ago, you said, Ave -o. <laughs> I will use that authority which you gave me in, in, the new, in, the, in the new budget of July to contribute one billion shillings to the child. There is a key here for the bishop, for the assistant bishop. was mooted way back in the late 1990s after the old cathedral could no longer accommodate the congregations following their considerable growth. Instrumental in this vision for a new bigger cathedral was the late Archbishop uh, Mpalani Koyoyo. It's our joy that Mama Nkoyo is here with us this morning. Your Excellence, to realize the vision, two plots of land, four and six on Lugard Road, where this sanctuary uh, is sits now, were acquired. A committee to spearhead the project work chaired by Honorable Justice Ogola, had earlier been set up. Uh, this committee, Your Excellency, did tremendous work which enabled the construction to commence in 2010, but then under the leadership of a nobleman, the late Shem Yakagaba. The late Shem handed over the mantle to Mr. Huntington Karhanga, who is among us this morning, who saw the completion of the superstructure by 2019 when I received the cue from him. Our phase as a committee progressed the project to the current state that we are proud of. Your Excellency, this five-seater iconic cathedral with acoustic ceiling, the granite and terrazzo floors, with the two galleries that you see, with five chapels that can enable services to go on 
in five areas uninterrupted with a 12 level prayer tower with the parish offices the diocese san bishop who is our archbishop and the assistant bishop's office two levels of parking space and other facilities has so far cost us 25 billion uganda shillings The remaining exterior works, as most of you could have noted, Your Excellency, will be completed in the next phase. And these include wall cladding, slanting windows, two lifts, and the diocesan offices. These are estimated to cost us 7.5 billion. The building committee, Your Excellency, that I'm so privileged to chair, wishes to recognize and profoundly thank you, Your Excellency, for your immense support to this project. In the same tone, we want to appreciate the Archbishop of the Church of Uganda and his predecessors for their visionary leadership that has led us to this stage. The assistant bishop, the provost, the entire cathedral leadership have been at the forefront of this project and we thank you. We also wish to thank the parishioners and the entire um, Ugandan fraternity, should I say, and the well-wishers for funding this project and for the sustained prayers over the period. Our gratitude does go to the contractors, in particular, Seroma Ebenezer Joint Venture. This saw us from the difficult stage of the first stage of the construction. Ambitious Construction Company, Sayan International, our consultants, we do want to thank them as well. Allow me, Your Excellency, to appreciate deeply the building committee members over the period for their oversight responsibility over this project. At this point, Your Excellency, allow me to ask them to stand up Starting with Mr. Huntington Karhanga, Honorable Gola, if you are in the house, 